wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show. I'm just here for the brain bleed. That sounds stupid, but it's funny. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all here for the brain bleed. Or, you know, I, I think it's midweek right now. You're probably watching this 10 years going, what, what the hell, Chris? Uh, no, it's midweek right now, and your brain might be bleeding. What do they call this day? They call it hump day. I think that's where, I don't know. I'm not going to make any jokes for that, or else I'll probably get banned on YouTube. Uh, anyway, guys, wh- thank you for coming by the show. We certainly appreciate you guys always. You guys are the best audience in the world. Have we ever had that discussion? Have we ever sat down and said, let's talk? Let's have a discussion. You guys are the best audience in the world. We're approaching uh, 13 years tomorrow officially is our thing. Thank you for giving us the great month. The, we, the, the numbers this month have been up 30% than normal. And we're 13 years old. So I don't know. What are we doing right after 13 years? I guess we finally we finally, we finally got through to people, damn it. <laughs> Millions of downloads in uh, the last month of 13 years. You guys decide to show up or something. I don't know. But thank you for referring the show to your friends and family. Clearly, a bunch of you are doing that, uh, sending it out there. Be sure to go to iTunes. Give us a uh, five-star review over there. We certainly appreciate that as well. And uh, it makes it so I don't cry in between the shows going, I wish there was more reviews. <laughs> Why don't they love me? <laughs> anyway, guys, I love you back. The family loves you, but does judge you. The Chris Foss Show. Go to LinkedIn. Our big group, 122,000 people over there. The LinkedIn newsletter. Goodreads.com. Fortress Chris Foss. All those crazy places on the internet. Uh, you can find us. Today, we have another amazing author on the show. Uh, she is the author of the book, When the Ice Melts, the story of Coraline jewel uh came out june 21 20 uh and she's going to be talking to us about her amazing book her story and everything that she does on the show so it'll be an honor to have her as well with us so we're going to talk to her she is an international best-selling author a certified master's sexologist podcaster adult performer lifestyle coach motivation speaker sex positive advocate top-rated wedding planner, swinger lifestyle community owner, and over 20,000 members, and most recently was promoted with over 20,000 members and was recently promoted to head to PR. Okay, uh, so she does some real PR too. Uh, she was graced on the covers and pages of AVN, Las Vegas Journal, ASN Lifestyle, Lifestylers Magazine, and Night Moves Magazines. She was voted in the top 100 sexologists for pleaseme.com. Man, I didn't even make the top 100. You must have pushed me out. Uh, <laughs> and uh, 20 and 22, 21, 22 have brought uh, multiple ASN Lifestyle Magazine awards and nominations. Uh, uh, welcome to the show, Corlin. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. How are you today, Chris? There you go. As someone who's a Las Vegas native, I, I sure know what uh, ASN is all, or AVN is all about. <laughs> yeah, I was just in Las Vegas. I just came home yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it's quite the thing. So give us your dot com so people can find you on the interwebs. Uh, so let's see. Uh, we just I just redid my entire website. So it mm-hmm. just is the coral and jewel dot com. And then from there, you can link to my podcast, which is um, high profile podcast dot life. And all my go. social media and everything is from there as well. It's easy. <laughs> so you've written an interesting, you've written about an interesting life in your book. Is this pretty much the whole story of you growing up as a child and, and uh, what got you down the road? Yeah. So my book is kind of interesting. I was, um, you know, it's, a, it's kind of like, you know, when life throws you a curveball and, you know, you have to decide, like, is that something I should do or should I not do? Um, I grew up, I was born in South Africa. I was immigrated from South Africa when I was three oh. years old. My entire life was a competitive. I was just training to go to the Olympics for ice skating and I was going to represent South Africa. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, my, t- my whole childhood, everything, you know, people said, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to go to the Olympics for ice skating and nothing mattered. Nothing else mattered. I was, you know, I went, went to college. Um, but what happened was I got injured when I was 18 years old. And oh, no. so um, I didn't want to tell anybody, you know, that I was as hurt as I was. And so I was taking, you know, ibuprofen or whatever I could to try to get through the training and came to the realization that there's no ways, there's no ways I'm going to be able to compete at the level that I was hoping to. And so my life took a turn and oh, wow. I, 
And, um, you know, it's kind of like how I went from, you know, um, Olympic hopeful to I married somebody. We moved to Sweden for four years. Mm -hmm. Um, I had children, um, and my life went, I lived for, you know, what everybody expected of me, go get your college degree, be a house mom, do your thing. And so, um, I wasn't really happy until I found kind of my place in life when I was 40 years old, kind of everything turned around and. Now I think I'm. Mean, I think I, I think I've been taken to my destiny, but it put me through some obstacles to get me here. That was for sure. So there you go. So you do coaching. You help people. You do work in your business. Tell us how. To, I mean, what was the crossover that when you went from you went from housewife into you know the adult industry? So I mean, I was brought up. I was brought up a really really good family and I had great parents and everything. But um, just like I think most parents and most families, you know, sex wasn't. It wasn't openly discussed. You didn't discuss mm -hmm. nudity. You didn't discuss uh, masturbation, puberty, orgasms, anything like that. And so, you know, it was just like everything was on the down low. And um, I got married and I had a husband and I I think I was 30 years old when I had my first orgasm. And I was like, oh, now, wow. I, now I get why you like this. Like I just, that was for me, it was a chore. <laughs> it, was wow. like, it was like, okay, I got to have sex with him, you know? And so from, <laughs> I know that's terrible. I know. I'm sorry. He's a good Every man. wife, I know. <laughs> He's a good father. He's a good man. But, um, sure. so, you know, sure. that took me. And then, um, when I came back, when we lived in Sweden, I came back from Sweden and, um, I was very, I was, I was coaching ice skating in Sweden. Um, and I was very over the politics of the sport. And so when I came back to California, I opened up a mobile fitness company for children. And then when the housing market hit in 2008 was kind of when everything changed, my husband came to me at the time and he said, you know, how's your fitness company doing? And I said, not good. And you know that. And he says, well, women sell their underwear online. And I'm like, no, they don't. And why, are you, look, why are you looking oh, yeah. at that? You know, and then he went to work and I was like, hmm, do they really? And so I looked online and <laughs> sure, I started a business in a day. I went down to Ross. I bought underwear. I took pictures, posted on Craigslist, buy my wet panties. And here we are. <laughs> you know, we had, we had, uh, um, we were talking before the show and, uh, we had Eric Everhart as a friend. I made friends with him and a couple other porn stars on, uh, during COVID. Mm-hmm. And they were on Clubhouse. I don't know if you had heard of that. that app. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was a big app during COVID because everyone was locked down and oh, they, yeah. they couldn't have a social life. So we we're all talking to each other on these on these uh, virtual stages on Clubhouse. Well, I ended up meeting uh, Eric Everhard, and I can't remember the other names of some of the other people that were there. But they were coming on. They were like yourself. They have books. They they coach people on how to do things better in the bedroom, which we all need. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and uh, especially, there's some of you who need it more than others. Let me tell you. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can't just lay there. Um, I mean, you can, but it's not as fun. You're doing, you're doing it wrong anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> and, and Corlin will tell help you with that. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and it's supposed to last longer than 15 seconds. That's all I'm oh saying. Oh my God. Men. It depends That's on the mood. Saying, men. <laughs> it's just all I'm saying, man. And, and I guess married people do have to hit and run. Yeah. Um, so, uh, which is why I've never been married. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I, I met them and one of the gals, I believe her name is Pauline. I don't know if that, I'm pretty sure that wasn't her stage name. Okay. But she was, they were, you know, th these are human beings. They're wonderful people. And, uh, but she told us once about how she'd been a porn star for a number of years. And then her, one of her friends started selling panties. And this is a, this is a thing that people want and we're going to talk about sex because that's a human thing. And, uh, but she started, so she asked her friend how much money she was making. And she like, told this whole story on Clubhouse. Yeah, it's crazy. And she, and she gave us a detail, like on the numbers and like, we had women in the audience going, Hey, how, how do you do this again? Uh -huh, I want exactly. $6,000 a month. What? Yep. It's crazy. And, uh, yeah, it was like all the moral all the moralness of some of the women went right out the window and they were like, <laughs> they're like, I can get what for this. I mean, yeah, I'd I mean, sell well, my that's, underwear if someone would that's buy it, kind I, of what I, happened to me. You know, I, I started with that and I started with that and then I started modeling just like for part-time work. Mm -hmm. And the modeling led to a photographer saying to me, do you know anybody that knows, owns like a nightclub that we can take photos in during the day? And I'm like, I don't know anybody. And I looked online on Facebook and a friend of mine said, our friend from high school owns somewhere down in San Diego. And I was like, all right, I'll call him. And when we pulled up, I said to my photographer, I said, I did not know that this was a gentleman's club. I'm so, so sorry. Oh. And he's like, we didn't know. And he's like, are you okay with that? And I go, I think so. And we went in and, you know, my photographer was like, okay, climb on the pole. And I was like, wait a second. I was an ice skater. I've never climbed on one of those things before. And so my friend from high school said, well, let me call in a dancer to help you. And 
when he was, she was, she would put me in position. She'd step away. They'd take a photograph and then he should catch me again and bring me back down. <laughs> and um, my high school friend came out. He was the owner. And he says, so like, yeah, so he says on a break to me, he says, you know, honey, you should dance here. And I'm like, mm -hmm. um, I'm 35 years old. Okay. I don't, don't, don't even know how to dance on a stripper pole. And he says, you'll make about $800 a day. If you want to do it three days a week, you know, 12 to five during the day. And I went, and how do I sign up? And now, where do I go for this? Uh, yeah, to sign so, up to exactly. So that's how it ended. Well, you know, panties to modeling to to that to mm -hmm. uh, dancing out a club out of a club in a Palm Desert area called like Coachella. It was a club out there. Yeah. To the owner or the manager of that club coming to me and saying, "Hey, I heard that you do like weddings and that um you um you used to kind of dabble in the swinger lifestyle." And I said, "Well, my husband and I tried it. Then we broke up our marriage, but we tried it." He says, "Well, mm -hmm. would you like to host a swingers party here?" Again, I'm like, "I don't know anything about hosting a swingers party." And he's like, "Well, my boss is willing to invest fifty thousand dollars in someone." And I said, "I can figure that out." And so that's the nether curveball that I took, which took to running a swingers club, and then now I have twenty thousand members, and then wow. Everything just kind of like all these like things happen. And the, the coaching came from people at my swingers club would always pull me aside and say, he did this or I have this problem. And so people would say to me, you spend half of your life not being a hostess at your parties, but counseling people. Why don't you open up your own like coaching business and lifestyle coaching business? So that's how that came about. There so. You go. so do you help people be better in the bedroom? Um, I do. I do. I, I wouldn't say that I help you be better in the bedroom. I do now because I went and I got certified as a master sexologist. But oh. originally it started as uh, people enter the lifestyle swingers community for a variety mm. of reasons. And there's so many different misconceptions about it out there, you know, where people think that it's, um, you know, a husband, a wife or a boyfriend, a girlfriend show up and it's a free for all. And they ring. I always say this. They ring a bell and they go, oh, OK, you guys, 11 o'clock penis is out. Vagina's open. Let's get started. And I'm like, that's not what it is, you know, and it's about Fridays you know, in my house. <laughs> Oh, there you go. I'm coming over on a Friday then. Okay. So, um, but they, you know, I love this. I love his snore. You guys. <laughs> but um, it's like, you know, um, if there's so many people that just go to it because maybe it's a husband and wife that are just looking to add excitement to their marriage and maybe they just mm. want to watch. They're a voyeur. They want to be watched. They've never, ever, ever, you know, had sex in front of other people or they're looking for that illicit unicorn or they're... they never have sex in, with each other in front of each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the lights on or the lights well, on. Yeah, with the lights on. Right, Wait, you know, embarrassed of their bodies, whatever. So that's what I do. I <laughs> I help people. I help people bring that excitement back, like embracing their sexuality and being, you know, proud of who they are. And also, um, there's so many people that have kinks and fetishes out there that they're mm -hmm. so embarrassed to share with their partner. And so they wait till their partner goes to bed and then they jump on to do a webcam show with me, someone like that. Or they call, wow. I, work, I work for Dr. Susie's Institute. So, so the Susan oh, Block wow. Institute. So I work for her and I'm a therapist for her. And mm -hmm. um, it, it breaks my heart when people call me and they say, okay, well, I need to talk to you now. Oh, wait, 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 wait my wife just walked in. I'll call you back. And I'm like, ah. Why don't we bring your wife <laughs> on and let's, let's talk, talk about it? Yeah. So, you know, let, let's talk a little bit about this. Cause I know people right now might be going, Oh, I don't know about this, but it turns me on. Um, you know, the thing is, the thing is I grew up in a highly religious environment. So mm -hmm. I grew up when there was repressive things. In fact, I think uh, my parents tried to explain sex to me and it was <laughs> nothing what it, what it was like the diagrams and stuff were. I don't nothing. even think I got that. Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up Jewish, like so. You know, yeah, Jewish school, private Jewish school, and everything. But yeah. I don't even remember, like, even the discussion. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much had to learn sex from my Catholic preacher. No, I'm just oh, kidding. Jesus. That's a joke. Oh. I'm, I'm an atheist, so we throw. It <laughs> hey, they earned it, man. <laughs> um, so <laughs> you don't you don't do that stuff and not get <laughs> arrows thrown at you. But no, a lot of people grew up in in America's kind of a prudish, very. It, yes. it, it, morally religious thing mm -hmm. and the sad part is 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 biology wise sex is a very natural human thing i mean we wouldn't all be here if if somebody you know didn't rub uglies and healthy that's yeah healthy. That, that's what people forget the benefits of sex are, there's so many if you don't there's so oh. many like the, yeah there's a lot of health benefits to having sex having sex yeah. safely safely i'm yeah. a safe, I'm a safe then, sex advocate. there you go and and also just happiness like, mm -hmm. you know, I've never been married because I enjoy sex. That's the joke. But there's a lot, seems to be a lot of truth to it, according to husbands mm -hmm. I know. And, uh, you know, for me, relationship's over when that thing dies. But then I kind of also understand well, what it's like to be an alpha male and keep that thing from dying. Uh, <laughs> I make a lot of alpha widows. Um, <laughs> having my time. <laughs> you know, I used to own a modeling agency for uh, almost a decade uh, okay. in the 90s. And one of my friends is Ron Weiss from Hawaiian Tropic. Uh -huh. um, I think some of my audience knows about this over 13 years. Um, and so we had a lot of girls who got into modeling at 18. And then from there, uh, they tend to go into different things like escorting or stripping or 
uh, you know, sometimes they go to New York, sometimes they end up, you know, and Playboy Mansion. Uh, you know, I lived uh, that kind of lifestyle, the Hugh Hefner of Utah lifestyle. And so I saw a lot of these different variations. It became where I had friends who owned strip clubs. Uh, I think there's an honor plaque of my name at uh, Spirit Rhinos in Las oh, okay. Vegas. Cool. Yeah, this <laughs> probably an honorary. <laughs> He's come here more than once. But no, sex is a very uh, natural thing and it's an important thing. And if you have a relationship, it's an important thing to the health of your relationship because if you're not having sex with each other in your marriage, well, then who are you having sex with? We live in such a, we live in a country that's so, um, you know, we, it's, we, we get in such a monotone, um, you know, routine of life. So, you know, you get up, you take the kids to school, you got your breakfast, you go to work, you sit in your traffic, you commute, you come home, you do the dinner, the laundry, the cleaning, the this, the that, and before you know it, you're going to bed. So, you know, uh, we forget that, um, that's why, you know, we're one of the countries that has mo the most heart attacks and early deaths and high stress. Cancer. Yeah. yeah, and you know, and we eat like shit. We eat yeah. crap. We process food like crazy. Um, and so, you know, that's it. Really made me because I mean, I was in that. I was all right. Well, my Olympic dream is over. Okay, I'll get married. I'll move to Sweden with you. Okay, this is boring. <laughs> you know, and I was bored out of my mind. He would go to work. He'd come home, and he's like, "Really, you're still in your pajamas?" And I'm like, "And where would you like me to go in the snow today? And then where would you like me to chuck uh, like, to the tiny <laughs> little town of nothing? Like, you know, and and that's there's a way. moose on the corner and a. A good looking Mountie down the road. And you gotta wait for that moose to cross the road. That's the deal in this in that state in that country. You have to wait. Oh, if you pull that's up, true. Yeah, and they cross and they're slow and they sit and they just gotta sit there wait for them. You have nowhere <laughs> you have nowhere else to go anyway, so it's fine. But um <laughs> You know, but, wow, so, really, really bashing Canada. This is I, bashing like, Canada. I like Sweden. I love Canada. Yeah, I love, I Canada. love, I love Sweden. I, when, I, when I when I look back on it, I go, I should have just stayed there. Life was a hell of a lot easier because I came back here. But um, you know, it gave me the opportunity to really start real life, like um, digging deeper into like why did I not have an orgasm until I was thirty, and yeah. and did I, I all that time I thought I was having an orgasm. You know, when I lost mm -hmm. my virginity, I was like, oh, okay. and I never understood. It. I was like, I don't understand like why this is such a big deal. This nightmare you know and i finally just figured it out and um and then the more and more that i studied into it and the fetishes and the kink that's why i got the sexology um masters mm. because i wanted to understand when gentlemen called me and or, or women i get women too that call me and share these kinks and i go hmm I gotta figure out that one. Like, well, I'm not sure of that one yet. You know, like why you're obsessed with having sex with dead people. Like I gotta figure that out. So, you know, it's weird. It's really yeah. weird. Like there's, I mean, it's, well, it's illegal I, too. I, yeah, that too. But that, that, that's what I'm saying. You know, you, so instead of going, instead of me going, eh, that's weird. I go, Hmm, let me see where that came from and why did that come, you know, and what's yeah. the reason behind it or what's the foot fetish reasoning or the, the diaper fetish or there's so many different ways. Do you ones. know why there's a foot fetish? Can you explain that to me? What? Well, uh... I, I can tell you what the studies say. I disagree with it. I don't think this is it. The studies say, and, and I've interviewed people that are coming on my podcast to share with me. They, they're they comfortable to share their fetish, okay? So the studies say that as we were babies and we're on the floor and people are walking around our home barefoot, we become obsessed with the feet. I don't think so. That's not, that's what the studies say. I don't, I disagree. I don't see myself being, I see more the high heel fetish, the leg fetish. Yeah, like, yeah, the I legs. can see where that comes like from. Yeah, yeah, I think leg, legs are sexy, but, especially in a pair of high heels. <laughs> but, and I don't mean, uh, I don't mean shame anybody, but it is good for a bit of a comedic uh, knocking. So if that, <laughs> if you are a foot fetish person, please don't feel shamed. Um, although, I don't know, I, I'll do a joke on it. So I had this gal who worked for me and we had 5,000 square feet of office space and it was separated by two or three different areas. And I knew, you know, I'd heard of foot fetish, but uh, she would have to go outside into an open air hallway outside uh, to move to the three different offices. And she would be barefoot all day long and her feet were nasty. And one day over lunch, she started telling us about how her husband had a foot fetish. And we're like, you walk around the office all day barefoot. And, and, we're oh, like, I know where this is going. Does he clean your feet? And uh -huh. she's like, yeah, he likes it. And, you know, I I mean, like I say, once again, if, if, that's your, if that's your kink, God bless you. It's just, I can't, what I can't figure out is there's there's all these other parts of a woman that are like a carnival fun, fun zone. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you be like, yeah, that stuff, go. Uh, just you know, I'll stick with the feet. I <laughs> Also, I think also, I know, I know. I mean, I, yeah, that's my you, joke. isn't that? That's, well, I can see you guys. I knew you were going there, but like the foot thing, it's more of a um, he was it's, it's a submissive to your partner. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's taking, rubbing her feet, cleaning her feet, licking her feet, you know, um, pampering them, manicures, you know, or pedicures, mm-hmm. sorry, stuff like that, you know. Um, and that's also part of it. But I do uh-huh. get, I that do get, sense. I get men on the like webcam shows that go, Corlin, I just, the, the stinkier the feet, that are your feet really stinky? And you want to be like, no, like I'm clean. But you're like, oh yeah, honey, they are so, st- they stink. Yeah. You know, I, because that's what they want. Yeah, sure. They serve your audience. I mean, that's what we do on this <laughs> show. We stink and they love it. Uh, but uh, no, you, you, it actually makes sense. Come to think of it, you know, between Jesus and, you know, old Roman empires and stuff, cleaning of feet was a sign of, I think, caring or loving someone. Yes, exactly. Go back to that. Think about that. Feet. Mm-hmm. Jesus was, Jesus had a foot fetish, damn it. Uh, anyway, wow. That's just, no wonder I'm an atheist. It's anyway, guys, we yeah. just discovered that we just discovered something on this show. But no, sex is really important, and I I was really lucky that very early on in my twenties, you know, I I was your average teenage boy, and very quick on the on the action there, and uh, mm-hmm. somewhere in my 18, 19, 20th year, a friend of mine gave me a book, and it was like three hundred sixty five positions of the year, <clears throat> oh. and I was like, this is a bit much, but you know, I mean. It's like throwing someone an expert man when you're in beginner mode. But it made me start realizing, oh, what is this thing about satisfying my partner? What's this thing about making sure everyone's happy and ah, in this sort of act we're doing? And uh, and then I got interested in that and and everything else and, you know, making sure that my partner is at, reaches her completion multiple times and uh, has that big finale. Mm-hmm. And that made for better relationships, made my girlfriend happy which is a man, Mm -hmm. you want to make your woman happy because if she's not happy, things don't usually go well. And she's, yeah, yeah. What is it? Happy wife, happy life. Yep. Yeah. And so I I recommend husbands. And I've told my husband, I posted this on Facebook, go get a bedroom book or, you know, hire a coach like yourself to make sure that you're happy. I'll I'll never forget, and I'll quit pontificating, but I'm laying a foundation Mm -hmm. for my audience to realize that this is important stuff, guys. We're just not talking about, oh, the the stuff you do at night when you're on the computer. You want to be have a healthy relationship with sex. I remember being 28, and I gave a gal that I had just barely met, started dating, her first orgasm she'd ever had in her whole life. I think she was about 25. And she sat on the bed crying, just like sobbing. And I thought I'd done something wrong. Like it hurt her or something. And I go, what's, you know, what's going on? Are you okay? And she was, I mean, it was like that death sobbing, you know, that shaking and, uh-huh. <laughs> and she's like, you gave me my first orgasm I've ever had. No man's ever given me an orgasm. And I, it shocked me because I live kind of in a different world. And I was like, are you serious? You're 25. <laughs> but yeah. Is- but it's because you don't, you know, you don't know. I mean, when I, I lost my virginity, um, 18 or 19, I think, mm-hmm. but I, I, I had a female ejaculation. We call it squirting. Okay. Mm-hmm. I thought that was an orgasm. So that mm-hmm. was it. So, and, and there, there was no, there was no internet at the time, you know? So my boyfriend, he was, uh, you know, in the, in the fraternity next door and he's like, you peed on me. You're disgusting. He told all the guys in the oh, house. Wow, that's bad. So embarrassed. And mm-hmm. I went down to the San Diego state library and I went to go, what are the, you know, where you put the little things in and you look it up. And I saw that 10% of women have female ejaculation. I went back to him and I go, ha, you're lucky. Look at this. And I showed him, you know, and ah. but, that's what I thought was an orgasm. And for me, mm-hmm. I was like, well, okay, you know, this is it, you know? And so up wow. until the age of 30, to me, that was an orgasm. And yeah. it wasn't anything that I craved or was like, oh my God, I need to have it, you know? Not Isn't it insane how few women have A orgasms? Lot. Yeah, I think more now because you're more open to experience it. Also, yeah. like the, the thing with like with, with squirting is that technically – Almost any you any woman can do it, but it's a feeling of like you have to urinate, and so you hold it back and you don't realize, you know. And then when I tell people, I mean, I work for a company, I work for a gentleman at the AVNs. Um, so it's uh, he's a biological scientist, and it's a watch that developed. He developed a watch with another adult performer, measuring the uh, frequency and velocity that you finger a woman at to make her have a female ejaculation, mm. and the watch turns green as you like go like this. So anyways, oh, really? um. Yeah, it's, I have one, but I get my, my, arm gets, my arm gets tired. I'm always like, I'm so tired, I'm tired. But um, he, they do now you know what a man feels like. Right? <laughs> but I've watched Where's him. That like, damn G spot. I've watched him like take women who say like, "There's no way I can't do it," and I'm like, "He'll make you squirt." And they're like, "He won't make me squirt," and I'm like, "He will. I'll go with you and I'll show you." And he does, you yeah. know. And women go, "Oh my god, that's what it is." Ah. Yeah. 
oh, I like it now, you know? So yeah, you just same. have to embrace your sexuality. You have to, who cares if people are going to judge you? That's mm-hmm. my biggest thing. You know, my biggest thing is the judgment in our country and mm-hmm. the, you know, and, and how masturbation is terrible. And nudity is terrible and be, role play is terrible. And how dare you consider even having another person in the bedroom with you? Three of you, that's disgusting. You know, and it's mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is everybody's got that fetish or fantasy, whatever it may be and embrace it, try it. If you don't yeah. like somebody's fetish, then it's none of your business. It's not your yeah. body. Then stay out of it. So it, it's sad that in this country we have that moral hang up. So, you know, the other thing to me was, you know, I and I think I had this uh, fear as you know a boyfriend as a man. I'm like, you know, if I don't make her happy in the bedroom, she's probably going to leave me. Mm-hmm. So you know, that's another reason. And I don't, I don't understand. I, mean, I guess a lot of married people can just be like, well, I'm married to her, so uh, you know, I don't have to. Well, make we her happy. call it the um, yeah, the married situation. I call it the I shoulda, woulda, coulda syndrome. You know, uh-huh. and that is I can't tell you how many times in my life I talk to somebody who's older now, and they say to me, you know, I should have left that relationship sooner, but you know, I, I, I there was kids, and I stayed for the kids, or mm-hmm. I hated, I hated my job, I should have left that sooner, but you know, and how? Ha- I mean, I, I have I have friends that are he's like 72 years old, and they're like, you know, going through a divorce after 42 years, and they go, Corlin, do I swipe left? to write on twitter like what do i do oh, Tinder, not or twitter. I'm like, <laughs> our tinder and i'm like don't you don't even go on tinder no 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 no, that's mm. not for you because imagine trying to get back into the dating world now after being mm. married for 42 years you know that's like yeah. what the, what is god what's happened right yeah i'll <laughs> see a lot of that in my dating pool everything's online people. you know but that's it i mean you know it's um it's you know i just i meet people so many times uh. they go i should have gotten out of that marriage i should and so i try to encourage people if you're not happy and you're not willing to you, you haven't discussed this with your partner you're going to be in that category of 72 years old mm. and starting all over again do you want to be there yeah and you you want to have i mean to me what i've learned just from a psychology sense mm-hmm. a love sense uh, you know, everything about it is very natural and important and healthy. Uh, you know, I've seen, uh, uh, you know, psychologists talk about how having regular sex with your partner is a very important part of it. And to me, yes. if you're going to raise kids, if you're going to be happy in your marriage, you're going to be happy in your relationship, you know, making a woman happy is really important. She's going to make you happy. I mean, it's kind of like you're both there. You're trying to rub the uglies and and make each other happy for you know half an hour hour yeah, two hours there's, how long well there's you so many and then you also, yeah well you also have to put you have to put a t- like a twist on it so yeah. role role play date yeah. night make yeah. a time make time for date night um do something that your partner would never expect for you uh put something mm-hmm. in the, when they t- pack a lunch put something in that lunch box you know um mm-hmm. i mean things that you would do for your kids like have a good day at school baby mommy loves you do it for your husband. Do it for your partner. Exactly. Um, yeah. Go to the office early and leave something on the desk, like a pair of panties that are sitting in the drawer and be like, I'll be waiting for you when you get hmm. home. Random stuff like that just goes, holy crap. Like there's a little bit of excitement. Like, oh my God, what's she going to do when I get home tonight? Like I'm going home early, you know, or what is it? So, And, and people that are regularly, you know, in the bedroom, let's put it that way, mm-hmm. and, and passing out from cold sweats <laughs> and too many, too many uh, shaking organs, <laughs> yep. um, you know, they're happier. They love you more. They're wonderful to be around. Trust me, I'm 54. There's a reason I'm not married and I have a good sex life is because right. it's because I I don't I can't do a relationship if there's no sex. Once the sex drops off in a relationship, in my early years, sometimes I didn't understand the alpha thing that I was doing, and I, I get a little betaized. But you know, I I understand the whole dynamic of it now. But even then, I've never met a girlfriend that I can't have. There might be one or two that I met that I haven't had that can orgasm, multiple orgasm, mm-hmm. and even then, I just didn't work with them long enough to where you know uh, you can you can get it done. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's really important. It'll make your life better. So I highly recommend this. This is the whole reason I'm talking about this yeah. whole show. It's because I want people to know this this can really make everyone's life better. It'll make your it your can. children then, be happier because both the parents are happier. Yeah, right. And then there's there's people you know that you know it's okay to say to your partner, you know, your wife or husband, hey, let's. Let's go. We're not. You're not going to talk to a therapist. Like, let's go talk to a sex coach and let's get some ideas to bring the, you know, some excitement and some kink back or whatever. Or, you know. But a lot of people are too scared to discuss. Like, oh, I can't tell. I can't tell my wife that I that I like to do this or I like to do that or I can't tell my husband that this turns me on. I mean, I get women that call me that they like to take on that submissive role. Okay, yeah. so be told, you know, get on your knees and you know, and please me when I come through the door or spank, you know. But they don't want to do that with their husband because they don't want him, them to him to think, oh, you're you do this with everybody or whatever it may be, you know. And so I think it all comes down to you know be open and honest with your partner first yeah uh, but i know so many people are so scared oh no I'm isn't, not it, my head. isn't it amazing that people can't be honest with their partners with their so they can partner. be honest with their boss at work yeah they well they can be honest with everybody you. else on the planet but that person you're spending your life with 
Yes, it drives me crazy because, you know, and I say, how come you can tell me, but you can't tell them? Well, because you're a stranger over the phone. You know, we don't, you don't see, I can't see you. I don't yeah. know what you look like. And I'm like, okay, I won't yeah. tell you my full name then because then you'll go find me. Yeah. But, um, to, <laughs> it's true. But, it's um, true. Um, you know, to me, and then also like the masturbation thing. Do you know how many people come to me and they go, oh, I, haven't, I haven't masturbated in six days. If she catches me masturbating and I'm like, what? What? Like, the, the, you, you're supposed to masturbate at least two times a day. It's supposed to help yeah. with, you know, preventing prostate cancer. Masturbate. Yeah. Please, God, masturbate. Just so. don't do what Jeffrey Dubin does on a Zoom call at CNN. <laughs> oh, uh, that joke. There's a time and a place for everything. That yes. poor guy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, in one of the industries that I got into, I didn't get into, let's put it that way. I stepped right <laughs> into that, didn't I? I kind of got into it, and I'll tell you how, because uh, I think the story is funny and enlightening, but so, you know, I got friends with someone who started a swingers website back in the day. Okay. And one of my other friends, <laughs> you, you probably do, but since you do, uh, you have your site, I won't mention it. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, uh, so they started a site and, uh, you know, I had all these friends with money, all these friends with money at the time. We we're all filthy rich. And um, so we we're all in all these businesses. One of my real estate business, uh, he, he, he was, he was uh, buying real estate, flipping it. And so he had bought in this 1960s styled mansion, which is a lot like the Playboy Mansion. Okay. Because it was shag rug. It was like bright red shag rug. And the whole place was like 24 rooms, Olympic sized pool, 20 wow. people you can get in the hot tub, <clears throat> perfect party house. It sounds amazing. Where's it at? <laughs> it was in Utah. And, and it, Utah. I guess one of the old U University of Utah coaches had it back in the day. And this thing, mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, it was like the second home to, to Hugh Hefner with all the shadow wow. in the 70s. It was just, it was so dark, you know, with all the dark wood <laughs> and all that stuff. I'll never forget the red shag. So um, my friend was unhappy in his marriage. And my, you know, he knew my other friend who had a swinger thing. And, I, you know, my friends who own strip clubs. And uh, so he, they started throwing swing, swinger parties up at the mansion and they would do the thing i'm sure you're familiar with the business where they would have couples come up and of course a lot of women strippers like to to play with that and you know and so i would get to go to the things and kind of sit there as a fly in the wall and go and go uh well this is interesting and i would help my friend manage and run it i was there kind of as i was working i was yeah that's what that's what all the men say. I was volunteering yeah. and working. Oh, wow. I just yeah, we lost your thing there. <laughs> so, uh, but one of my friends was the lawyer. So okay. we always had lawyers on scene. And, uh -oh. and he was talking. a, there you go. So uh, he was, a, he was a lawyer <laughs> who, who uh, took in, um, he was a lawyer. It, I can give you a sec to fix that if you want. Okay. Well, I'll stand up and fix that. You keep talking. Though. I can okay. hear you. Now you guys just get my hump day butt. So. Okay. Do we have to pay extra for this? No, nope, it's free. It's for this time it's on the house. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So, so my friend, we always had a lawyer on scene because the Utah okay. cops would always show up. They showed yep. up at my big parties. I'd have like 400 people at my parties in Utah and they would show up and me and my lawyer friend would stand on the porch and, uh, you know, I'd just be a body man because I'm a big guy. And, uh, my lawyer friend would, you know, tell him to F off and give him the riot act because he was an attorney okay. and he was a very evil attorney. Like he was one of those guys, you know, that Donald Trump hires the, who's that Michael Cohen? Oh was, gosh. I talked to him about getting on the show and he was starting his own podcast. So he decided not to come on because he wanted to do his own podcast, but uh, he, he was an evil attorney. So anyway, I saw, I saw the whole lifestyle. It's a healthy lifestyle for people. They, they if you not, do it the right way. Yeah. There's, yeah. A, there, there's rules, there's rules and there's etiquette and um, there's reasons to get into it and reasons not to get into it. And that's mm -hmm. another thing that I do is, you know, when somebody shows up at my party, <laughs> I can look at my door guy and I go, uh, 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 if I, I give him like, like three months and he's like, I give him six and I go, I'll, I'll put 2 million on it. I'll give him six, <laughs> you know, and um, he always comes to me. He, you should have him on the show. He always comes to me and he goes, damn it. She's always right. She like nails it with how many, how long yeah. I give him. And I can say, who's going to be, I can say, they'll be divorced. That one's going to leave for that one. I can like point out. Ah, dude, I would have been, I, I'd love to sit there and hang out because I used to bet, I used to, we used to bet on employees. We'll be like, that employees only last a month. My business yep. partner, we bet a dollar like they did in that one movie, yeah. Benny Murphy and stuff. Um, but no, we saw the, we saw the lifestyle. Uh, I saw the uh, website my friend had built. Where's, the, uh, um, how, where's that mansion now? <laughs> it's still in Utah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's Who still owns there. that? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I have to go look it up, but uh, I know exactly where it is. I remember the street. We used to do a thing where, you know, you'd have to go up the neighborhood and you couldn't have like 50 billion cars because that would give it away. Okay, and so yeah. my friend's own real estate 
uh, property, you know, commercial real estate. So, and then my other friend on a giant tour bus. Okay, and so, so spark there, subtle, and then, yeah. Yeah, and you have to sign the waiver and all mm -hmm. that shit for liability falling and, you know. But it was it was an interesting thing. But I realized that, you know, people have, and you know this, and, and people should know this, people have a lot of different sexual uh, prolicivities, prolic, uh, yeah, they have different <laughs> desires, let's put it that yes. way. And it's okay, you know, as long as it's always consensual, their safety like you mentioned a condom and uh they're over 18. Yeah, um, so you know, and also it's um you know I I always say this too is that um uh like at the at the events you know you don't you, sometimes you don't know what your what your kink is right or what your fetish is or mm -hmm. what you want to get out of this like lifestyle swinger experience and then you might say oh we've always wanted to try a threesome me and my wife you know we've always wanted to have another woman and then you have that and you go eh didn't like that you know like when i say when fantasy reads reality it's not what you always expect and not that's okay. always what you and expect that's okay. it's okay it's, it's okay to say to your partner you know eh, i didn't really like that one you know and Sometimes I, it's better to keep in your head right. this is one so, thing I learned over life. totally totally i mean I, a lot of times my favorite is when men want to have that threesome with another woman and then they go crap the women are not bisexual so i had to take care of both of them at the same time and i'm like uh-huh yeah. How's that where you go? And you're not you know? you're not making the you're probably not making the first woman happy anyway why would you want to add to that mix <laughs> It's a joke. I oh do my I gosh, that. I love it. So but no, I mean, I mean, like seriously. I mean, I've dated twins. I I did Ooh. the whole uh, Hugh Hefner lifestyle. I mean, I was wait, friends. did the twins play play with you together? You and both twins. Yeah, it's a new like, one, you guys. For me, is it? Is it new? It's yeah, I've new. never seen. Tw I've never had two two <laughs> sisters play with uh, one guy at the same time. Well, I hope. But I mean, did they play with you? Well, okay. it was a little bit more than playing. Let's put that. <laughs> We no. say play. We say play. <laughs> so, so when you own a model, you just see. I was friends with Ron Rice of Hawaiian Tropic. Okay. So we would be like a state thing for Hawaiian Tropic to hold their contests. And so we had 400 of the hottest women in Utah. We had a, it was an actor agency too, and there was a lot of filming that would go on in Utah. It was right after the big strike in California. Touched by who an angel at the time Utah. was filmed. Yeah, who would have thought? Well, you right know, Utah, like the those religious, religious girls are right more. Right can't get alcohol on certain days. Yeah, you know, those bad. those religious girls are, are not quite as chaste as you think they are. In fact, exactly. The, the more religious they are, the the more interesting. But uh, mm -hmm. so we would we would do all that. But no, I just it's just really important for people to realize that you know sex is a healthy thing, and you want to make your partner happy. So talk to us about maybe some coaching that you do and some other aspects on top of the book. <sighs> Yeah, so I do a couple different things. So the one thing I do is a lot of people that I talk to um, will write me and tell me they're interested in getting involved in the adult industry. Mm -hmm. And that can be on a number of variations of aspects. So that where do I write you for that? Or where does do I have my friend write you for that? No. Uh, so I, I, everything just goes to the, the <laughs> what is it? Uh, at CJ at the CorallineJewel.com. That's how you email me. Let me write that website. down. Hang on for a second. <laughs> right, exactly. So, but that can be anybody who's a producer or um, somebody who wants to open up a website, uh, someone who's got the funds to invest, they've got an idea, a script. So it's not just performers, okay? So yeah. um, I, there's so many different legalities and they're changing every single day. The paperwork and the and the the rules with uh, merchant account processing and Visa mm -hmm. and MasterCard and Pornhub and this and that. There's so many different things that you need to know. So they'll come to someone like me and they'll say, listen, this is my idea. This is mm -hmm. my financial backing. This is what I could do. But I don't know where to start and I don't want to I want to make sure I cover my bases. So mm -hmm. I offer that kind of coaching. And then I offer coaching for the lifestyle, which is a uh, either couples or singles. OK, um, who mm -hmm. either are involved in the lifestyle, getting into the lifestyle or having issues in the lifestyle and want to find out how they can fix that. So mm -hmm. they come to me. They you know, we have a, a consultation and then I say, you know, listen, I can't help you. But I think this person can, or um, I can help you, and this is how I can help you. I really feel that um, I can't help anybody that's, you know, going through alcohol addiction or sobriety or, you know, drug addiction or, um, you know, they're going through rehab or they've been sexually molested. I don't feel like if I'm qualified if I haven't walked in your shoes. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Um, and where something like this, you know, I'm divorced because of the lifestyle. I mean, my husband and I lost a 14-year marriage because of it. And people say, why on earth would you stay in it and run a club? What, what are you thinking? You know, and I say, because it's open-mindedness you can wear what you want say what you want be who you want and there's not supposed to be judgment now there is judgment people are catty you know there's high school judgment and everything when you're you know yeah. 50 56 years old they still talk shit but um you know the, it's true but you know it, it, it is it is an environment where there's more open-mindedness to accepting people and um that's why i stayed into the into the community and that's why i create my community is different from other communities i don't judge you on your mm -hmm. age or your nationality or if you're six feet and 400 pounds or if you're five feet and three, i don't care 
You know, yeah. are you a cool person? Are you open minded? Are you willing to embrace your sexuality? Then you're welcome to my club. Be respectful to others. Be respectful to yourself. And you're welcome. So. Yeah. What else do you consult on? I think you you kind of uh, mentioned a few other things there that you do. Um, so it was, yeah, so the, the, adult, so the adult industry, then consulting on then um, in the lifestyle, how to get into it, how to be safe into it. And then I also help with people with just dating in general. Let me look mm -hmm. at your dating profile. Okay, this is why you're not getting any action. Or, <laughs> So I, you, know, you do that for men and women men and women yes wow. yes yes i have women that are like what am i doing wrong i'm you know i got divorced and i and i'm like okay the first thing okay so guys we all know that we love our children this is a big one we love our kids okay i love my kids okay i'm the mother i'm the mother you screw with me whatever yeah. you screw with my Mama children Bear. You screw my children, you better go. You better run because I'm yeah. gonna come. I'll find you. Okay, then that's yeah. me. But that doesn't mean that my dating profile says my children are number one in the world and you don't matter and Dude. they come before. Da, 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 da. Okay. Dude. Have, yeah. And that's I I hate that. that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. you see, and what do you do if you're on a dating site and you see oh, that's that, a you left go, swipe? You go skip. That's right? a left swipe, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so or another one. I love my, you know, they love their fur babies. Okay. I love dogs. I'm a dog. Ask people. I walk into a bar and I'm, I'm on the floor playing with a dog before I'm even greeting anybody else to say hello. What part are you going to where they're dogs? Oh, there's always dogs. I go to like little, like little, like a uh, hick bars. Like, um, <laughs> it's true. I've got like the pit bulls come running to me. They love me, but you don't. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hi video. Okay. Sorry. My friend the um... other day, but you don't tell your, you know, somebody that you might potentially date on a dating site, and my my furball comes everywhere with me. And and if you don't mm -hmm. like it, then you okay, shh, relax. You can bring your dog, but just you know, leave, let them know you first. So these are the things that I look at, and I go, okay, let's fix this, let's fix this, and um, mm -hmm. let's remove this picture and <laughs> stuff like that. So yeah, can you explain to me? Because I, you know, I'm 54. I'm still on dating uh, profiles. Why people so, use? <laughs> why are women posting their children? I mean, the one thing I know about single mothers is there's a 1,500% higher chance of them being attacked by a sexual predator or violence. Uh, and you're just advertising for pedos. Like, it yes. just creeps me out to see and it when I see it. You, the men do it, too, though. Like, if you go on Plenty of really? Fish. really? Yeah. I don't go on. Don't well, go like, on. If, yeah, like, when I used to go on Plenty of Fish, the men will, will have a picture of their children on there. And I'm like. Really? Yeah, I'm like, don't these are your don't put your kids on a dating site. Like on yeah. the swinger websites, you can't even post a picture. Like, even if I you know said, like, you know, happy holidays for me and my family to my community, I can't put a picture of my kids yeah. on there. I don't even put my kids on my like my Facebook, my other paper, you know, my Facebook page. Like, you know, just don't do that. But um, yeah, keep your kids out of your dating pictures, keep your I personally say keep your fur babies, you know, out of your pictures too. You know, we're not looking really? to date, we're, oh, I'm not, looking, true, to date, huh? I'm not yeah. looking to date your dog. I mean, I feel I like dogs, don't get me wrong, but yeah. you know. I want to know who true. you are first, you know. Yeah. So do I have my dogs on my. No, I at one point I put my dogs on. I think I could, took them down because. I mean, I put like, a camel on. No. But, you know, I, I was mean, riding a riding a camel. Oh well, that's you know, as long as that's not a pet. Of course, there right. might be some people there into that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there you go. But no, I I I see that it just makes me cringe because you know I've actually had women on the show over the years of the podcast that talked about um stalkers and and i know about the dark ends of the internet you know and there was that case in wyoming where you know a guy escaped from chicago as a pedo he finds a young girl just uh oh in her bathing suit out front and and all the horror begins. Oh, it makes you sick. yeah and I mean, so i'm about... like why would you put your chill i mean yeah, are you no. advertising for a pedo or are you advertising for a boyfriend and here's both? another thing another thing that i talk about too uh just safety in general for men and women yeah. and all yeah. you know all the catfishing i had a very i had some interesting <laughs> guests i had some interesting guests on my podcast um a gentleman yeah. that is a part of my club okay so he's mm -hmm. a part of my club he's a he's a retired police officer okay and he was telling me a story about how he was on this website and uh they told him you know oh send in your money to get tested for your um std so that when you arrive at the uh party the doctor <laughs> will be there on site to test you yeah right and you'll have your results within the next 15 minutes okay sure and then you could go in and whatever and then there was a gentleman that had written me and said hey do you ever have like single men on your podcast who can share stories of catfishing that happened to him because this was one time i was and i go Wait a second. I heard that story over here. So I brought the two on the show together and they uh -huh. were catfished by the same person, the same woman's name, everything. Wow. And the one guy was scammed out of almost two thousand dollars. The yeah. attorney, the police officer, he caught on a little bit quicker. And I think he wasn't scammed out of any money. He never sent money. But, um, you know, it happens on both ends. So we talk about um, even couples meeting other couples on a swinger site. You don't meet another couple and then just show up in a hotel room. That might not be a couple. That could be three men re ready to rob you. You don't yeah. know what it is. So, yeah. you know, of course, three ground. men robbing you might be a kink, too. So there's that. <laughs> 
Yeah. There's, there's, there's one for everything there's a kink website for everything there it is sorry. but you know keep your safety uh do your facetime yeah, you do um and then you know things within the community <laughs> to protect that your you know your marriage doesn't end because of the lifestyle such as uh group conversations always staying on on a, on a you know a kick like a whatsapp or kick where all four of you are talking together and you're not husband's not talking to the wife or the other person and meeting for coffee and vacationing and stuff like that so yeah there's and, rules and, having, and etiquette yeah and having rules is really important that's what i learned from my swinger friends mm -hmm. you know they they have rules of you know it's 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 kind of it's about sex but we don't have a relationship with her uh, you know, we don't bring there's a there's the marriage wall, I guess. you would Right. So we call like it that. there's. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's sex and then there's emotion. Um, and so yeah. what happened with my husband and I is a perfect example is, you know, we were new. There was no I didn't know who to go to for advice. It wasn't like I could say to my friends, you know, hey, uh, so, so my husband and I are swinging right now. Can you help me out? You know, my friends used to say to me, your husband and, and her, they have like a connection. And I'm like, oh, no, we're just friends. And then I go to my husband and I'm like, stop making googly eyes. The preschool moms can tell, you know, and so <laughs> it's true. And that's how it happened. And so but they were, but look at that women's intuition. They were right, because I yeah. would say to him, I'd say, <clears throat> do you have like an emotional connection like with her? Like, are you meeting her like when we're not all together? You're crazy. You're jumping to conclusions. And I'm like, well, am I? And guess what? I wasn't crazy yeah. because they were communicating and meeting for coffee and meeting for breakfast. And, and I was being told, you know, I have to go to work early. I'm going to be at work late. You see? So mm. that's another thing I tell people, trust your gut. When your tuition, when just, when something in a woman's tuition says something's not right, something's not right. Yeah. And this is really important. This is why I don't get married people. I'm like, you know, you marry that person. They're supposed to be your person. There's the one, which is bullshit, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe in a, in a one. In a um, one. Yeah, fuck Disney. Um, so <laughs> I'll probably get me demonetized just that alone. Disney's oh gonna be God. like, you said what? Send the mouse to kill him. Right. Oh uh, so the murderous Mickey Mouse. The mouse, uh, yes. That should be a new thing. Uh, oh so, but you know, I, I just don't understand how people can't be honest with their friend. I mean, if there's any, if there, if there's one person who should know what your favorite thing to do is in bed or how to make you happy husband, or bring you yeah. to completion, it should be your partner. I agree. <laughs> and, I agree. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, in, and it's so much easier when you're not, you know, I, I've had friends that have run marriages and whether their partner is aware of it, sometimes it's approved, you know, they, they've got extracurricular stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a lot to manage. It's a lot of damn work. Like some of my oh, swinger yeah. friends, look, I'm not trying to shame them, but that it ends up being a bit of work. You know, I, I just have friends. They have it's to true. go to swinger I, clubs every night. So. Well, I tell people, um, you know, another thing about like the, the swinger lifestyle or, you know, the lifestyle in general, we call the lifestyle is um, mm -hmm. you're, you're using, you want to, you want to um, embark on this journey together as a team, as a couple. Okay. To enhance, enhance your relationship yeah. with your partner. Don't live the lifestyle. Like don't let the lifestyle live you live into the lifestyle. So that's a big, very, you know, yeah. I will, I used to have people that would walk into my parties and they would go like this. Mm, nope. Nobody. And I go, Dude, you've been here like two minutes. Go get a drink. Okay, relax. You're not here just to see who's who's here to stick your thing in next to them, you know. Um, but that's it. You know, and they're on the internet all the time, 24 hours a day, looking for a couple. You know, who's the next piece of meat? You know, stuff like that. And I think that that um, it takes over. You know, yeah. every every weekend should not be a lifestyle event. There are people like that that are every single weekend there, and big, and I think that you gotta you gotta learn your balances. But um, you know, be, thing on, be honest with your partner. If you if you try something and you go. Hey, you know, honey, I wanted to try that, but that sucked. Okay. Yeah. So it sucked. Do you want to try it again a different way? Or is that nope, huh. off the table now? So, yeah. I mean, you try different things and make your partner happy. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I have so many friends that have been divorced. In fact, now I'm 54. So like many. when I go out with girls and they go, uh, how many divorces do you have? And how many mm -hmm. kids do you have? And I'm like zero and zero. I know. You're and like they look blessing. at me. I'm a, I am a unicorn. Right? <laughs> He's a blessing, <laughs> you guys. Also an alpha. So. Where do you live? I'll be there over there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, 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 you know, they, they think I'm lying. They, they just go, yeah, you're full of shit. Like I've had girls <laughs> on the second date, they'll grab my hands over dinner and they'll be like, they'll look at my eyes and they go, Chris, look at me. Uh, look, I'm not going to judge you if you have kids <laughs> and two divorces or three divorces. Five. I'm not going to judge you. Just tell me it's okay. I'm I, I care oh about you. God. I like kind of getting feels for you. Uh, but just go ahead and tell us. And I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I've just been really responsible and I never got Smart. tired of being happy. So I never got married. Oh, oh my God. I love, I love how you do that. Chris, Chris, look me in the eyes, Chris. Be honest with you, I love it. Oh my God. Dude, they do that to me so many times, especially now. It's gotten really bad because yep. nobody my age, you know, and, and, you know, I'm one of the few guys my age 
who isn't like tainted. Like I love all my exes. I, I if think, I ever yeah. if I ever met them, I thank them. I'm I I understand as a man, I'm I'm self accountable, and a lot of times I made mistakes. They made mistakes. They were there being their best people at the time. I tried my best at the time. It didn't work out, but I did learn a lot from them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and sometimes they were bad and I learned a lot from them. And sometimes I was bad and I learned a lot from both of us. But to me, I, you know, I don't have any hatred. I don't have any child support payments and divorce you're payments. Smart, you're smart. You know, it's like I say, I don't, you know, when I talk about my husband, you know, my ex-husband, by all means, like he lives a block away from me. He is a good man. He's <laughs> he really is. He's a good man. He's an amazing father, you know? Yeah. Um, he fucked up, you know, excuse my language, but it's like, I tell people, you know, um, had we, had somebody to guide us and say like, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, listen, I really think that um, they're meeting, you know, like there's an emotional connection there and, and had the guts to say, you know what, honey, you're right. I do have an emotional connection with her. And we need to stop seeing her. I think we might've still been married today, but yeah. we didn't have that communication. And it wasn't like we went into this lifestyle looking to add to our marriage because remember at that time I was happy, but we yeah. were, I was selling, I was selling <laughs> panties and somebody wanted a, a custom video. That's how it all started. They were like, we do a video of like having sex with your husband. And, and I was like, I don't know, let me ask him. And then somebody videoed us and it didn't work because we were drunk and my husband was like that was hot having somebody in the room and i was like really all right and that's how it started right. you know but um <laughs> but you have to you know he's not a, i don't i look at him and i go we could have been married we said we, we would have still been married but you need the guidance you need to communicate with your partner yeah and and, and I mean, women are wonderful sexual beings. They're covered in erogenous zones. Men are not. I think we have like three and you guys have like 200 or something. Ooh. Um, I don't know if that's a mm -hmm. correct don't, don't. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a scientist. I'm going to go and I have a couple hours to figure out. But you guys do. You guys have uh, a, a ton more erogenous zones. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you can't turn me on by rubbing my elbow unless you're, right. uh, I don't know, you look like... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think of one of my uh, 80s pinup stars who's on. Yeah, who's on? Carmen Electra, who I met in person. Oh, okay. Um, or or uh, who's the blonde who's on Baywatch? Those are my two uh, things. Or that. Farrah Fawcett. It's, uh, I can't. Who's you, the blonde? Guy? Why? Why, why? Why are we blanking on? She's that on one? Baywatch. Uh, she was the huge star. She was dating Molly Krug. Pamela. Pamela, 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 Pamela. Yeah. yeah. Those are my I three ladies that. from my life and Stevie. Okay. Nance. So uh, oh. that's why I'm still single. I'm. Very in my head to all of them. Uh, but and, and Carmen Lecter meeting her in person is very sweet. We had her uh, ex husband on the show, the guitarist. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, no, the point I'm trying to make, guys, is make your partner happy. You know, is uh, you know, like I said, I knew all the uh, the divorce joke that I was setting up there about how I know everyone who's divorced is like if I was married, I'd be like, I want to make her happy in the bedroom and I'll make sure I'm happy in the bedroom so that we can have a solid relationship because I know how expensive divorce is. I mean, I love her and I don't want her to divorce me. <laughs> I, that's another thing that I tell people too, is that um, you've got to establish that that connection with your partner before you yeah. get involved in the lifestyle um, and try to get other people involved. So yeah. even like someone like me, I dated somebody for three years Mm -hmm. um, as a boy, you know, we say he's a vanilla. He's never been in this lifestyle. And I, but we didn't even like, even he would come to my events and help me as a host, but no ways did we play, we say play with other people mm -hmm. until we had that establishment with us together at that connection, mm -hmm. because you don't want to involve somebody else until you guys have that strong communication and connection. Mm -hmm. So make sure you have that. And that's where somebody like me comes and helps you. I do a lot of coaching. I do what's called on call. Okay. So they pay for a couple of sessions and they will message me and be like, we need to talk to you like now. And I'm like, okay, well you can't like now cause I'm getting on an airplane but like in like an hour you can you know so um um and then there's people that you know they go through coaching with me and then they do exactly what i told them not to do and i you know and i go well yeah. you know and they're like i know we heard you but and i go it's not we heard you but like so i tell people <laughs> that too you know it's like a child it's like i told you not to do that why well, no mom but you know so. yeah. and, and and it's it's really important especially if i can speak to men on this that might be listening um it's it's there's making your girlfriend wife happy or significant other, I don't know if you're a guy, I imagine this, I, I don't know, I've never been gay, so I don't know what goes on their head, but I mean, it's their, their sex, but as a man, you're normally uh, looking to make a woman secure, provider, and happy, and there's nothing that makes you feel more as a man than making your woman happy in bed, and helping her reach her happiness completion point, uh, and then she'll gladly let you do yours. I usually have her go first or you meet in the middle <laughs> with a combined one. And then, and then you get the, I'm kind of sadistic that way where I get the last stand. Um, but <laughs> you, you, or if you're really good, you can make that whole big final thing crescendo at the end and everybody, 
everybody passes out and uh, goes into cold sweat mode. And I got to find out where Chris lives, you guys. I'm on my way. How far? <laughs> there you go. Uh, so, um, you know, but but nothing makes you feel like a man when you're when you're laying there as a man and you get done and you've like just, you know, wrecked that bedroom because mm -hmm. you, you don't stay in the bed, people. Um, you've wrecked that bedroom, that swing thing. Uh, you she's happy and she curls up on your chest and she's mm -hmm. shaking and she's going, Oh my God. And you're sitting there going, I'm a man. I mm -hmm. kicked ass today. And I bring this up as an important point because we live in a world where the last two generations have raised these betas, these simps, these feminized men who don't know how to do this anymore or care. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're, they just kind of weak and you know, these incels, which I really feel bad for, you know, having sex with a woman, a woman, is a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing and it's nature. It's human. It's biology. There's nothing disgusting about it. And so as long as she's over 18. Yes. Um, Matt Gates. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> if you want to feel like a man and, and for women too, if you want to make your man happy, you want to make him feel happy. Do it too. And I, it goes, I never... the, it goes the opposite, the same way. I mean, yeah. if for, you know, even like some, you know, for like someone like me, you go, are you, did that feel good? Or do you like yeah. it? Does it feel good? Yeah. I'm always saying, even during sex, I, you know, if I incorporate a toy, I say, do you like it? If you don't like it, I'll put it away. Do you like, you know, yeah. cause you want them to be just as happy as you are, you know? So. Yeah. You would never be able to, like I said, I've had maybe two gals I dated that I couldn't get to, um, to, but I, I was just dating them, but I couldn't get them an orgasm. They had some hangups, mm -hmm. but you would never be able to meet my girlfriend without having multiple orgasms. It wouldn't, it would never happen. We yeah. just, I'm going to yeah. make you do it. I'm going to, and I'm not going to shame you into it. You know, part of it is just you getting a woman to be present, have her head to where she's exactly. in the moment and Key feeling word. it. Keyword. Yeah, you've got to get, get her out. into having not having sex with Jack on you've the. Got to get out of your head, and you, yeah, you've got you've got to get out of your head, and you've got to be able to just let yourself go. And another yeah. thing I get too, men, when we involve a toy, it's not because you're inadequate. Okay, I get that all the time. She wants to bring a toy. No, it's just an additional addition of excitement. And yeah. you know, I get that so many times. Well, she brought in she brought in a dildo. Does that mean she doesn't like me? I don't think yeah. so. I mean, it, let, let me see you. But I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> so. Let me see. Yeah, send us a film. Um, but no, I mean. <laughs> I, I do have one sexual hang-up, though, uh, that my ex-wife didn't like. Uh, it was Wait, you have not married. We like to, we like, shh, shh, I'm sitting <laughs> at this joke. I know. Uh, so uh, that's the fun part of it. Uh, so uh, so my, my sexual kink was uh, having her pretend like she was my ex-wife and she caught me in the bed with twins. Oh! Does that joke work? Did I do that right? I don't know. Well, I, I, I'm ruined it, you guys. I'm sorry. It sounded funny <laughs> in my head, so, but I don't know. But yeah, I've, I'll do a joke on the show that that's kind of a callback joke, and I'll be like, "Oh, this sounds like my ninth marriage," and then throughout the show, I'll, I'll say, "That sounds like my fifth marriage." That sounds like my seventh. And people write me and be like, "How many marriages do you have?" And I go, "None." That's None. the joke. Yep, exactly. So uh, anything more that you do that you help people on that we want to touch on and tease out? Um, so the, uh, the, you know, that kind of what I do. So right now, um, my, my ultimate goal is I've got my documentary is coming out on my first book. Okay. So we are in editing mm. for that now. Oh. My second book. So the second book that I'm doing in my book, when I was writing it and it went to publishing, I kept saying to my publisher, wait, I forgot this. Wait. And she goes, stop it. Your life's never going to stop and your story is never going to end, you know? So she said, you, you need to do a book about, well, what happened was she says, that'll go in your next book. And as it progressed, when people would read my book, they would say, oh, I wish you had put more about the porn industry. I wish you had put more about the swinger lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I wish you had put more stories about working in a brothel. And so I was like, well, then wait a second, I'll have a book that focuses on each. So the second one is all about the swinger community, mm -hmm. what it was like as a married woman, a single, a girl, like uh, as a host, a community running the legalities, the crap I've gone through. That's been, you know, the biggest challenge is Oh, yeah, Swingers sure. Club. Yeah. Um, so the second book is I'm almost done. I'm like so close to being done with that. Um, and I've got my podcast, which uh, is all about, you know, adult adult topics, anything that has to do, like I brought my scientist on or somebody. I had a priest on who was, a, you know, whole life was all about being a priest and, you know, going through all the training. And then right before he was supposed to complete, he ended up changing his mind. And now he makes videos where he teaches <laughs> about sex. And, and, yeah, and they're like, they're like porn. Yeah, so, and I'm like, what did your parents say? And he's like, yeah, they were not happy. But, you know, yeah. um, so I bring people on like that. Um, I try to show um, my listeners and my viewers that just because you're an adult performer doesn't mean you're not educated, doesn't mean you, you know, uh, you, you came from a sexually abused relationship or you're a drug addict. I've had um, one of my guest my recent guest she's known as like the gangbang queen of the industry and mm -hmm. she is one semester away from being a physician she was a medic for the military for six years i mean and you never know she's 24 years old that's a brilliant woman uh, um yeah. 
Damn. Yeah. I mean, I don't. 24 years old, uh, was in the military six years as a medic. She's married to a man she met in the military, and she's like the gangbang queen of the world. And she says, I'm not going to go and be a doctor and quit my job in the, in the industry until the word slut is a word of empowerment. And I'm like, damn. Like, so, you know, that's why I do what I do. And then I travel. I do seminars. That's why I'm always like on an airplane. I go and I teach people in brand embracing your sexuality and live your life for you. That's a big thing I do is we all live our lives to, you know, what we're expected of, right? You know, live that picket, the white picket fence, get married, two kids, get your college degree, have the fur babies, right? And, um, and then you're not happy. And then you go to the I should have would have could have syndrome. And so I travel and I teach people until you are happy to say who you are and live for you and say, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm a swinger. So what? Who are you hurting? You know, and yeah. the more people, the more people that we can get in our country to embrace their sexuality, I think the less of, you know, this whole, shh, don't masturbate, don't talk about having another partner is going to be not so much on the down low anymore. Yeah. It just, it just astounds me because, you know, I, all my friends are married at this point at 54, mm-hmm. surrounded by married people. It's very different. Than how how many of your friends, friends, how many of the guys are happy? None. Not a lot. Yeah. I mean, married and happy that they, they yeah. They, the two are synonymous but part of it is their sex lives are are non-existent, non-existent. You know, they don't even get the year thing i think it's a 10-year anniversary no, no. uh gift though um but you know there's a lot of reasons why that uh you know part of it is they became very betatized or very maybe they were very feminized uh you know i understand women in their in their patterns and their arcs through life uh, I know why that sexuality kicks in in their 30s and 40s, and they're, mm-hmm. they just become a raging 20 year old again. Um, you know, it's it's life, it's biology. Let me ask you this because I'm kind of curious. You know, uh, a lot of people have fantasies, and like we mentioned before, the fantasies uh, sometimes, maybe many times, don't end up being what you think they were. Yes. And so, you know, I own a modeling agency for uh, many years. I have a huge library of all of our girls, you know, photos that we took. And it's kind of an archive of my life. And it's a bit like Hugh Hefner's archive. I'm friends with a lot of them today. So I know their past. I see them as the, you know, the soccer mom and stuff and going to church and four kids mm-hmm. and stuff. And I'm going, yeah, I knew her at a different time, I guess. Um, but, you know, we're, we're all friends. But uh, so, you know, I have uh, an extensive library of my life. Uh and, you know, I, I archive it and spend time with it like you did. He, once a day, he would spend time with his. Mine's not quite that large. Uh, but uh, I wish it was. Um, <laughs> you know, I studied you when I was young. And so um, the thing about uh, – so anyway, people people find that fantasy isn't what you think it is. Number one, if you can't perform well in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. And, like, like um, what I'm leading into is, like, like people will be like, oh, you dated twins. And there's pictures. The picture's on Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's very uh, – you know, it's not hidden. Um, there's not all the pictures on Facebook, but, right. that so that's <laughs> well, you're allowed to. Evidently. but, uh, no, it's, and so our friends would be like, you dated twins, you know, they'll see my modeling agency pictures. Mm-hmm. You date, you know, you date, you date in those girls. And I'm like, yeah, like half that room. <laughs> um, and, and they all know it. And, yeah. uh, and so, you know, a lot of people don't realize though, is they'll be like, oh, I want to date twins. And I'm like, that's it's not fantasy. what you, Exactly. It's not what you think it is. Maybe you want to keep it a fantasy and not ruin your marriage. Cause there are guys that'll do that. They'll mm-hmm. be like, they'll go into that or try that. And uh, you've number one, got to be able to make two women happy. If you can't make yep. the first woman happy, don't, don't add more. Right. Uh, and number three, when you break up with them uh, and send them back to their husbands, you uh, spend the next 30 to 60 days. Look, every girl you meet, you're like, I wonder if she has a twin and you realize you can't live that way. So, you know, that's an example for me of how a fantasy, you know, sometimes doesn't work out. And even then to this day, sometimes it'll kick in. Yeah, I'll be like, oh, I mean, she has a twin. What I say, what I say to people is that, you know, if you and your partner are, you know, anybody, whether you're single or a partner, okay, you have this fantasy and you try it. Okay. Yeah. And then you go, eh, that did I don't like it. Okay. Yeah. So now as a couple, you would say to your partner, okay, I didn't like that, honey. And this is why I didn't like it. And then, okay, should we try it again, but try it this way? Or do you not, do not think that we can even fix it? You have to kind of go through it. I mean, I've had a fantasy that has yet to be fulfilled correctly. It's just, really? every, yeah. I mean, I, I'm an exhibitionist. I love to be watched. And I have asked boyfriends, you know, I want you to blindfold me, put me in a room, go pick three guys at random in the party, pick whoever you want, come back into the room. I don't know what's going on. I don't know who's who. I don't know who I'm touching. I don't know who's doing what, but he's making sure that there's condoms and I'm being safe. And then, you know, but it's making me be that submissive. Look at my little slut. Look what she'll do for me. And then we leave, they leave the room. We go back into the lifestyle party and I never know who these men were. Okay. Oh, wow. I want that. But every time, 
time we try to do it. And then like the boyfriend will say, okay, well, what about, you know, and he'll say, well, pick somebody. And I go, well, what about that guy? Oh, not him. And I'm like, okay, well, what about, okay, like, like, that guy's kind of cute. Not about him. And I go, well, that's what you're supposed to pick. Don't let me pick. And then he says, no, nah, I don't really like anybody here. And I'm like, so I never get it done. Yeah. So I if any friend. volunteers listening, that's my fantasy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and your email is. Um, <laughs> you know, I had a friend one time who, uh, who he got picked by the guy, the husband. He okay. was at a club. He met this girl and uh she had kids and so but but you know i mean she was you know, older she's a wife but he didn't know that it was a husband wife thing he just thought he was a meeting a cute girl so he picks vanilla her hunting. yeah is that what it's I'm called thinking, vanilla I'm hunting you the words vanilla yeah. hunting is what they yeah. were doing and they are a hot wife couple he's gonna watch your friend yeah. and his wife and he did he was in the closet it was like a whole blue yeah. velvet uh yep. sort of thing <laughs> black velvet blue velvet but uh you know it's very natural but the, the reason I bring up the, the fantasy might not always work for you is that's mm -hmm. all the more reason to maybe take your kink to your partner and say, look, I really like this thing, but it's probably not going to work out if I go outside the marriage. And so let's role play it in here. So let's figure it out here. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand why people don't do that. Because I mean, they're when, too scared. They're too scared of the, oh, my God, what's wrong with you? Well, you're not happy. You know, now there's a fight. Now there's an mm -hmm. argument between us. Why do you want to do that? You, I'm not enough for you? Okay, I see how you are. You know, it's like, no, that's not it. I'm trying, you know, yeah. so that's the fear that I, that's the fear that people tell me all the time. I can't tell my partner, are you crazy? I can yeah. crazy. She'll divorce me and she'll use me, you know, and I'm like, then I'll yeah. be really happy. Or do you want to wait till you're 72 and then try over again? And then you can swipe left, right, or what, nothing on Tinder, you know, yeah. there again. I mean, we have all these authors that come on the show and they're wonderful people and they write a lot of women's novels and what they call these beach reads or beach books and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're always the same storyline. They're always yeah. the, they're always the get back with Jack and Titanic, the guy that, you know, your alpha widower in, in 20 years old, that you hit at your peak and mm -hmm. that's who you're thinking about when you're having sex. That's who you're masturbating to. That's, that's who you're, you want to get back to. And the fantasy of every one of these novels is getting back to that yeah. or it's combined or it's the beauty and the beast story. It's combined with the beauty and the beast story, or it's the beauty. Yeah. And the beast. It's always the beauty and the beast story. You know, the gray, the gray books were the beauty. We need, we need, we need new stuff. Yeah. 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 But no, I mean, this is what, how women work. This is what their mm -hmm. interests are and what's in their head. I watch what they do, not what they say. And, mm -hmm. and so that's what they like. And so you've got to, you've got to realize that, you know, I, I'm, I'm amazed at how many husbands don't go, you know, my woman is a sexual being. She has more, you know, like I said, she has more touch points that can turn her on than I do. There's kind of a reason for that, if you understand biology. I tell I them, I tell the men, I say, you know what's interesting to me? I bet that your wife is going, oh my God, he's so boring. And I wish that he would just come to me, you know? And I said, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. If you, I always say this too. How long have you been married? Okay, less than 10 years. You guys have any kids? No kids. Okay, perfect. So there's no alimony yet. And there's no child support yet. So if I were you, this is your opportunity to go now. <laughs> say it now. Don't stick, you know, because especially in California, yeah, after 10 years, you're fucked out here. So that's I mean, true. That's what I say. So go and say to your partner because mm -hmm. she might look at you and be like, Oh, thank God. I've been wanting to talk to you about that, but I was scared, you know. So you just don't yeah. know. And women, women, you know, I mean, men are overt communicators, women are covert communicators. Mm -hmm. So as a man, she expects you to lead for the most part. So, you know, lead, ask her, you know, let's get in, get into her stuff. Don't shame her and be like, oh, that's disgusting. You know, it bring your freak out, bring her freak out. And that's why people play that's together. Why people, that's why they hire sometimes me as a middle person. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they come together, then they go separate with me and the husband uh -huh. will tell me things that she doesn't know. And he'll, she'll tell me things. And then I go, okay. And then we come back together. And then I say, I'm going to now tell what you've told me and you've told me, and we're going to talk about this all together, the three of us, you know, and we're going to go through and there's no shaming. There's no <laughs> judging there. If you hit him or you hit her, like I get a lot of us, I'm, he's, I can't believe he and I go, put your hand down. You know, they're about to smack the partner. Wow. You know? Oh yeah. And I go Jeez. hand down. Yeah. You know? And so, but then <laughs> that way, that way there's like a middle person, you know, there's me in the yeah. middle going, Hey, listen, stop talking for a second. I'm talking to her or stop talking. Mm. I'm talking to him, you know, and it works. It does yeah. work. It's, it's worked a lot of times. Um, I haven't had anybody that I've coached that has ended up, ended up, I had one couple who had some issues. And then when I spoke with them, they said, well, we weren't a hundred percent honest with you from the beginning, you uh -oh. know? And so then I was like, well, then I, I can't help you if you're not honest with me. Yeah, so, that's true. you know, yeah. I can't help you if I, if you guys are entering this because you know, you guys have had affairs and you didn't tell me that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, then, so big message here. Uh, talk to <laughs> Coraline about, uh, about uh, all the stuff that she does for you, but get a healthy sex life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if it's with yourself, uh, you know, I, I've met women that, that 
uh, and I, I never can trust what they say, but they'll say that they'd never had an orgasm privately to them, to with themselves. Um, you know, and, and there's women I've met that I'm like, Hey, when's the last time, uh, you, uh, got some shampoo or we got down there and, uh, clean that area up. And, and they're like, they have like a disconnect because the, the whole be, part of their body and i'm like because, what the you're, hell? because you're so told you know now, now you focus mm -hmm. on your children and you're in you know, that kind of stuff and so mm -hmm. you know there, i mean I, I i i could be the first to say that i used to say i could care less if i never had sex again i swear i used to say that i could care less it's a, totally irrelevant to me in my life <laughs> because i've never had an orgasm i didn't realize what it does to your attitude and your body and yeah. your health and your, your outlook on life. And so I'm a different person now, you know, and I'm, yeah. I also used to think that I could only have one orgasm. Like, okay, that was it. Well, that was, that was good. And now I'm like, holy crap, I'm like multi-orgasmic, you know, and I can have like 20 in a session. Like that's crazy. You know, and and, 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 they get better and, better. Can. and you can, but a woman does, you know, sometimes you don't, you just don't, you're not educated on it. You don't realize it. You think it's bad. Uh, you don't want to be judged. And so, you know, anybody who's like listening and is like, okay, Kurt, I want to talk to her. So <laughs> just reach out to me and I do seminars and I travel and I love, 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 love what I do. And yeah. I love, I love seeing that person that waits for me at the uh, back of the room of the seminar, you know, and then everybody leaves and they just start crying and tell me everything like that makes me go. I'm here for a reason. So to me, there is nothing better than being a man. I'm saying this for the men in the audience. <laughs> there is nothing that will make you feel more like a man when you've kicked her ass in the bedroom and she curls up beside you and you're 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 her man. God, you're you're the dude. And uh, there's nothing that makes her happier and it'll make you happy too. I mean, just the sex part is fun, but you know, you just, you just feel like a man. You're like, mm -hmm. I made my woman happy. Fuck. Yeah. I am the ruler <laughs> of my world. If you understand how men work in our brains. Yeah. Yeah. Being Kings is, is uh, our thing. And and man, when you don't have that, I, I don't know. I don't know how people live. Cause I can never live that way. And that's the, you know, with the me too movement, you know, all these women, like the woman, I tell women, you know, listen, I'm an entrepreneur in the, in the world. Okay. I am a mm -hmm. tough girl out there, but it's okay in the bedroom to be that submissive and let go and let go of that responsibility. Yeah. You know, you, you can call me a slut in the bedroom all you want. Call me a slut out there. You better watch out. Cause I'm five feet. I will take you down. <laughs> people know that they go, they call me firecracker. And somebody just recently said she's been upgraded to dynamite. Like, but I mean, that's me, that's but me. in the bedroom, it's okay to, it's okay to be submissive. And that goes for men as well. It's okay yeah, to be like, some guys like honey, that. just dominate me for God's sakes. I don't want to make a decision in life today. You know what I mean? It's okay. Cause you know, yeah. you're, you're a businessman in the real world. That's why they go to dominatrixes and get dominated. So don't yeah, be afraid. They have to be in leadership positions. You're always, yeah, you're always in a leadership yeah. position. Think about it. You're a CEO of a huge company. People say that to me. Like, oh, they're sissies. I'm like, listen, they're probably CEOs of huge companies. And that's why they go to a dominatrix. So somebody else can tell them what to do and make the decision for a change. Yeah. You, know? you, want, you, so, you want to get out of always having to be the guy. Exactly. So be, don't be afraid to just let yourself go. And like it goes back to what did I say? Embrace your sexuality and just be who yeah. you are. And if somebody else has a problem with it. Turn the other way. It's not a problem. They can and it's through. human nature, people. It's biology. It's, it's mm -hmm. There's nothing dirty or filthy about it. In fact, if if people didn't do it, we all wouldn't be here. In fact, that's the, whole, that's the whole reason we're doing is the, is because we're animals and we're, uh, what is it? We're proliferating society. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. been wonderful to have you on the Thank show. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank and, you. And uh, hopefully we uh, change some people's lives or sex lives or I mean, or just you have a great sex life, have a great life. Just yeah. views in general. So hopefully, oh. you know, we get through to somebody that goes, hmm, maybe there is something to what they're saying. So thank yeah. you for having me. I really do appreciate that. There you go. Give us your dot com so people can find you on the internet. All right. Place. So once again, it is the com, And I am redoing the entire website. So bear with me because I'm doing it on my own now. I've decided in my life that if you hire somebody, you're not going to get it done the right way. So do it on your own. So bear with me on that. And my podcast page is, uh, what is it? It's high profile podcast dot life. Mm -hmm. There you go. Working there on you go. Uh, when the ice melts, the story of Coral and Jewel. Pick it up wherever fine books are sold. Stay away to those alley bookstores that went in one last week. And I gotta get a tetanus shot and I think rabies shot. Uh, so go where fine books are sold or if the book, go to goodreads.com for chess Chris Foss. Go yeah. to youtube.com for chess Chris Foss. Go to uh, all the groups on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and all those people, uh, places and stuff. Make your partner happy. You'll make yourself happy. I guarantee it. Uh, I guarantee it. I've lived 54 years being happy, people. Please stop doing <laughs> what you're doing uh thanks for tuning in be good to each other stay safe as always and we'll see you guys next time thank you <laughs>